Welcome back everybody and today I, as promised breakfast recipes that you can put in the freezer easy make ahead stuff it's gonna be a lot of fun and I have uh, quite a few recipes here but I've also pulled up a few from another website that I haven't gone to a lot but I did find a lot of breakfast ideas that I hadn't really thought about so what I have so far is I have done this before on the channel where I've done uh, pancakes and uh, breakfast burritos that you can freeze. And they're super easy make ahead. I will be doing those, but I probably won't cover those as extensively as I have in the past because, you know, I've done it in the past. But we will be making breakfast burritos. I'm using breakfast sausage, cheese, the um, southern hash browns, the cute potatoes. And then we're going to be doing the pancakes, which is kind of self-explanatory, but they freeze really great as well do the burritos. Now, the other things that I'm going to be trying out, and this is kind of a little iffy because I'm, I've got all the ingredients, but I was really excited by the other recipes that I found. So I might be changing things up a little bit. I don't know if it's going to make it in this video, but there's a recipe that is basically, um, how do I want to describe it? It's a brunch ham and cheese omelet casserole, basically. Um, it's, it's the same elements that you would incorporate into like a ham and cheese omelet, but you're doing it enchilada style with like a cheese sauce on top that you make from scratch. It's, it's really simple, but it actually will freeze too really well. So yeah i'm kind of excited about that so that may or may not make it into this video but quite possibly the next time i do well for sure if not this one definitely the next one for uh, batch cooking for breakfast so having said that i do have a breakfast casserole on here again it's really simple you can portion it up and freeze it i'm probably going to put what i make into um individual ziploc bags because I can give it to my family, they can take it on the road and then just pop it in the microwave and they've got breakfast. But you can also serve it the next day. You can, like I said, make ahead the whole thing and just freeze the whole thing. It's entirely up to you. And it is real simple. It's, you know, eggs, cheese, sausage or bacon. I think I'm gonna do both because why not? It's bacon and sausage. And then of course cheese and you put, um, instead of the, the Southern hash browns, the cubed, potatoes this is just straight up hash browns that you do and, and it's kind of a common recipe I forget which part of the country it's really popular in the US I've seen it on TV a lot where it's um, sometimes they call it like to die for uh, casserole where it's like it's hash browns and it's it's cream sauce and it's cheese and it's all things good in life so I'm definitely going to kind of make a riff on this. I've got the recipe, but we all know how I follow recipes, so yeah. But we're gonna be doing that. And I'm going to do possibly a different kind of muffin. You know I do the, the pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. I found a recipe for oat, oats and chocolate chips to make a different kind of breakfast muffin. I'm kind of not sure if I'm going to do that particular recipe, but we may be doing a riff on that. And if I come up empty with like, I can't make a decision, well, I'll whip up some pumpkin ones. Um, Cause I still actually still have a lot of pumpkin um, from the garden last season in, in the freezer that I actually, you know, roasted and did all the things. So I do, I do have plenty of pumpkin. There was another one. Um, there's actually a couple of versions of this next one that I'm really kind of interested. And I do have all the ingredients to make it. And this, this particular one is called bacon cheddar bites. And it's a like, like your egg bites, like I talked about in the last video, some of the things that I was going to make in this one. And this is one of them. The bacon cheddar bites is basically like an egg, but it's a muffin and it's got bacon, it's got cheddar, it's all the things in it. But then there was another one that was almost identical, but it's made where you put the eggs and you bake it, but it's in puff pastry, which I have like three boxes of. So I'm like, hmm, I think I need to make that. So yeah, so let's get ready. But first I'm going to show you how I whip up my homemade breadcrumbs. So I'll see you shortly. Alrighty, so this is the racks for my dehydrator. It's, uh, it was an Amazon special I got about six years ago. I don't even know if they sell it anymore to be honest. 
but it's a really great machine. I have done everything from, you know, meats to herbs to fruits to clearly bread. So what I do is pretty straightforward. Once they're all dry, and I usually set it about 140 degrees for about 10 hours, nine to 10 hours. Um, it's bread, so it's pretty easy to kind of, you know, suck out the moisture. Um, my family tends to love sandwiches, but they it's like they love it more in their head, and they buy a lot of bread, and then they don't use all the bread, and I end up with loaf after loaf every week. But it's great because the price of breadcrumbs pre-made in the store are pretty outlandish right now. I think I saw a can of Progresso uh, breadcrumbs going for almost like seven and a half dollars, like seven forty nine. So that was at the point, and that was a mm, year and a half ago, and I really have never looked back since. I just make my own. It's a good way to use up old, old stale bread, and they never go bad. I use them in my five-gallon, I store them, rather, in my five-gallon buckets with the gamma lids. Let me show you real quick what they look like. So that's it right there. And I have my oxygen absorber packs or silica packets. And I have never had an issue with bugs, uh, moisture getting in, any kind of molding, any, any problems at all. I've never had an issue. So I kind of swear by that little setup right there. And let me get you turned back. And so yeah, that's, that's what I do. And as you can see over here, this is not heaping full. I go about three quarters of the way, no more, because it needs to have room to break it down. So I don't end up with powder, I end up with crumbs. And as far as seasoning goes, I just kind of do just little sprinkles, however much feels good. Now the onion powder, as you can see, it's so powdery. I, I can't keep this thing clean. It's kind of driving me a little nutty, but I put a little, well, a little bit more than that, a little bit more of the onion powder. And then I do, of course, Italian seasoning, but I also add my own homegrown basil and oregano, which unfortunately I, I do not have grown. I did have it, but it got so crazy, I actually had to pull it out. Now, notice I put quite a bit of that in there. I'm actually going light-handed with my seasonings when I make breadcrumbs, because I'm gonna be doing these in, in batches, and I have a lot of trays. I have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've got seven trays here. If I over season the breadcrumbs, I'm, I'm gonna have a problem later on down the road. But I'm just gonna put in a little sprinkle of everything. And a little bit of the oregano, if I can get it open. Ooh, that was tough. And again, I just over grabbed, but just each one of these is probably about a half a teaspoon each, and that's all. Now my bowl is locked down. I'm just gonna put my lid on, see if I can get it on there. I'm going to pulse this because if you just put it on high and let it rip, you're gonna have breadcrumb powder. I don't want that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Yep, I say we got it right there. Oh, if I can get it back open now. This is a refurbished unit, this food processor. And I don't know what they um, did in the re refurb process, I guess, but it's in beautiful shape, but the seal on it is so tight that trying to get the lid on and off, could, it, it's a workout. It can be a workout. But as you can see, we have some pretty nice breadcrumbs. There's a couple in here that are just a little bit bigger, but nothing you can't work with. And so I'm just gonna keep mowing through these trays and get my container filled and I'll be right back with you. And I'm already making a mess. I am back after the finishing up those breadcrumbs and here's our first recipe and it will be the breakfast casserole. I have decided to go ahead and include uh, some bacon in with the sausage and that beautiful cheese over there. I am, I have been going lately with prepackaged shredded cheese. I noticed a huge spike in block cheese, which I prefer. And cost-wise, 
with the amount of, you know, foods that I've been making, freezer foods and meal prep, it's just been more cost effective, unfortunately, to get the pre-shredded. So that's the state of the nation right now. So we have all of our ingredients out. I've got my oil, my salt, my garlic, onion. We needed milk for this. Of course, the cheese, bacon, sausage, our regular hash browns that I may or may not have sampled a little bit for this morning's breakfast. Neither will confirm nor deny. So we've got these guys here and we've got our eggs and that's about the extent of what we need for this recipe. So I'll begin by getting set up and doing the bacon first. Then I'm, and I'm just going to probably just cut those into one inch pieces and then I'll do the sausage last and then we'll move on from there. Alrighty, the bacon is almost done. I'm going to drain off the bacon grease into my handy dandy storage vessel that I keep in the fridge. And then once that's done, we're going to move on to the sausage and get that done. I have got my containers. I need to give them a, a real quick uh, wash and rinse. And then once that's done, I'm going to move on to actually assembly because the eggs will actually cook in the oven, not in a skillet. So I think I'm probably going to get two, I'm hoping. So we shall see. I'm going to move on with the sausage and I will be back with you shortly, my friends. Alrighty, so our sausage is done. I have the bacon draining here and I drained off my bacon grease here. It's cooled enough that I can go ahead and put my lid back on so there won't be any spillage. So I'm just going to poke this back in the fridge real quick. And we're now going to get our sausage, which actually, this is just one package, so I think it's just one pound. And I'm glad I went ahead and did the bacon. I did not do the entire package of bacon, actually. I just did, I think I did like half. Yeah, about half. Because I am, I'm not going to film it because I've already uh, shared that with you, but I am going to uh, also make another round of cowboy beans. So I wanted to go ahead and save some of that bacon for that. So turned out not a lot of grease, which is lovely. Go ahead and get that onto our paper towel so we can kind of drain. I went ahead and looked at the rest of the recipe and it's super easy. I preheated the oven to 350. It's going to bake, I believe, 30 minutes. And really, the whole rest of the recipe is we're going to get a nice big bowl here. And I'm going to scramble some eggs, some milk, and some salt. And then I'm going to combine the bacon, the sausage, and the hash browns and the cheese in a bowl. And then we're going to kind of mix them together and pour the eggs over the top. And yeah, so let's go ahead. And while that's draining, I'm going to go ahead and get my eggs and milk whisked together and get the cheese out, get a separate bowl, do all the things, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we've got our setup here. I went ahead and cracked all the eggs because I am doubling this recipe. I'm pretty sure I forgot to tell you about that, but I am doubling it. I went ahead and cracked the eggs because I'm sure it's not very exciting watching a person crack eggs, especially 16 of them. So, calls for a cup of milk. I'm going to put a cup and a half. Normally I don't, as you know, add milk or dairy to my egg, my scrambled eggs. Um, so I'm going to kind of cut it back a little bit. And then just kind of break it up and whisk it. Actually, sometimes we'll go through and just stab all the yolks. <laughs> it's kind of vicious sounding, but it does kind of make it a little easier to go ahead and get the eggs whisked up properly. It does not want to whisk though. It's quite the wrist workout. Okay, that looks pretty good. I am, however, going to add some salt because we do need salt on all of these eggs. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon and a little extra friend. And those are ready to go. Let me get it mixed in a little bit better there. Okay. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. I can get all the egg stuff off there. And okay, so this recipe is very, very simple. They said to go ahead and take your hash browns that are basically defrosted. These are pretty defrosted. I'm going to go ahead and season these now. We're going to season in layers. So potatoes have very little flavor. So we're going to go with about a healthy teaspoon of that. Not, not a tablespoon, about a teaspoon. And then I'm going to take some garlic and onion powder and treat these just like when I make the southern hash browns, the cute potatoes. Season them the same way. It's a good, good blend that way. Tastes really good. Why change it up? So even though the recipe didn't call for that, I'm changing it and I'm seasoning the potatoes because I think it's really going to need it before it's all said and done. Again, potatoes taste like nothing. So you need to really season them well. So they're all mixed together. It said to add all of the sausage, and in my case, also bacon, to the potatoes. And just kind of give that a little mix. And I'm also going to be adding the cheese to this. So I'm just kind of mixing it together. Now the way this recipe goes is that you're actually going to take this the mixture that we've made here and you're going to actually put it in your your dish or in this case my pan that I'm going to be baking these in and then I'm actually going to take then that with the egg mixture and then pour it in over the top of that so it's it's kind of like a frittata in a way so it's a little bit like that but before we pour the eggs or do anything crazy like that this stuff is going to actually go into the dish so I'm going to get these guys out of the way here it says to go ahead and add some cheese. Who am I to argue when it comes to cheese? Now it calls for about a cup and a half. I'm gonna eyeball this because again, cheese. And so I would say that's a good, good cup and a half right there. At least according to my rule book when it comes to cheese. <laughs> Now it also calls for pepper. I'm not going to use pepper because the uh, rest of the family, again, as you well know, aren't huge pepper fans. So I will just omit the pepper. And then when I have some, if I want some cracked black pepper, I can add it. So that actually looks very, very lovely. So check that out. It's just a really lovely mix. So let's see what happens here. Let's grab our pans, which are over here behind you. Now I'm, I'm shooting for two. I think I can do two easily. Like I said, I doubled, I kind of doubled the recipe. So let's see what we get here. Kind of scrape my bowl down. Now let me see what I've got here. That's pretty chintzy. Let's get some more in there. Come on, you can do it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, let's see. I don't know. I'm thinking, actually, well, if I put that, no, I'm not going to do that. I was just going to think, well, if I put all of that in there, but then I won't have room at all for the egg mixture. So, let me go ahead, and I might... It's a little on the light side here. Let me see. Ooh, I know what I could do. I have extra. Oh, this is wicked of me. I had made up some potatoes ahead of time. Watch this. This is why leftovers are so fantastic. I have some of the southern hash browns uh, left over. I had made some ahead of time, and I was going to save them for the breakfast burritos, but this is not quite enough. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to give it a little mix, try to keep it in the pan. Put some more in here. 
And those potatoes are fully cooked and already seasoned. So it's just going to add flavor. See, that looks really good right there. That looks like it works. And this guy looks pretty good. Might steal a little spoonful here and there. Oop, come back here. Now, if you see any pink on the sausage that I cooked, I deliberately left it just a hair pink because it's going in the oven. And actually, both of these are going in the oven. Now, yes, you can freeze these as is. The recipe says that you can, just like any of my other freezer meals, um, it says that if you want to go ahead and freeze it, freeze it in its raw state, so to speak, and, you know, cover it very well so that it won't get freezer burn. And then when you want to actually cook it, just like right now, you're going to heat your oven to 350 and you're going to take this out the night before and put it in your refrigerator. And then about 30 minutes before you're ready to cook, take it out, boom, in the oven, you're good to go. So yeah, you can do that. No problem. Um, do I want to add them in here or over there, over here? Seems how we have just a little bit left. So crisis averted. I was actually able to make two by stealing a little bit of leftovers that I had. So that is pretty awesome. Now, according to this recipe, we take this guy, pour it on both of these, and that's it. But before I do that, here's a little something I want to share with you. I'm sure many of you already know this, but if you're using aluminum foil pans, put them on a cookie sheet. You're going to have a lot more stability both in and out of the oven. These things, no, they're not going to hold up the weight. It's kind of like, I always laugh at, at like Thanksgiving when they have those huge turkey roasters and they're aluminum. That's not going to hold a paper weight. It's very dangerous and very misleading. And if you're an experienced cook, it quite possibly could be very dangerous and disastrous. So yeah, when using these pans, always use a cookie sheet. It's just a little added protection. It also helps to protect from spills. So take this guy. Grab another cookie sheet. And now I'm ready to go. And when I pour this egg mixture in here, it will be fully supported as the weight increases. Now, let's see if I can pour this without getting it everywhere. Because, yeah, it's me. So, let's see. I hope I have enough egg mixture. I don't know. This could be fun. I may. I have extra eggs, but still. Yeah, I'm going to need more eggs, guys. So I doubled what they called for. And not even close to enough. And apparently I missed an egg yolk over there. Boop. Okay, we got it. So yeah, I could actually stand to go ahead you can see the difference between this and this. So even though I doubled the recipe, it wasn't enough eggs. Now, granted, this is for one dish. So this is kind of on me that I, you know, trying to double it at the last second and not having enough eggs. That's kind of a me problem. But actually, it's an easy fix. Just like with the potatoes, I had some extra in the refrigerator. I can whisk up a few more eggs. We're in business. So I'm going to do that really quick and... Then I will be back. I'm going to top these with some cheese and I will show you what they look like before they go in the oven. Alrighty, as we can see, it worked. Both of them look beautiful. They're nice and full. And all I did was is another six eggs with about a half a cup of milk, eh, about three quarters of a cup of milk. Whisked it together, added some salt, poured over the top, came right together. So now the last part of our endeavor is to sprinkle dink some cheese here. And I actually probably don't really want to go all that heavy. I know that sounds a little odd coming from yours truly. It'll still be plenty, trust me. But yeah, that should be good right there. And then I'm just going to do the same over here. And because it's egg, it will actually kind of blend in 
as it cooks because the cheese will melt and it won't stay just on top. It will actually go down into the egg, which is really lovely. So between what we mixed in and what we put on top should be fantastic. So they are done and all I have to do now is pop them in the oven. Now, one of these will be frozen. The other one will be put in the oven. So I will be right back. I've got 30 minutes on the clock with these babies and uh, can't wait to see what they look like because I actually think a piece of this may be my dinner tonight. So I will see you shortly. All right, they are out of the oven and they both look really good. They're nice and bubbly and golden. But this, this one right here kind of cracked me up for whatever reason. It got puffy on this side and it's really low on this side. I'm not exactly sure why. The other one is fine. Um, it's level and looks great. I guess I'll be having this corner for dinner tonight. So, <laughs> But they came out beautiful. Um, they cooked for, I was wrong with the time. Uh, it was not 30 minutes. It was 40 to 50 minutes according to the recipe. And so I ran with that and actually, yes, it did take that long. I went ahead and as you can tell, I decided to go ahead and cook both because as I uh, peeked at them through the oven door, it occurred to me that it's not going to make very many servings and I can package these up and freeze them as is. So that's what I'm going to do rather than just freeze it and then cook it fresh, then package it. I just went ahead and cooked both. So we've got that done and I'm going to be moving on to probably the next couple of recipes which will be I think pancakes and the breakfast burritos. Now you all are familiar with that if you watch this uh, channel for any length of time. I will go over it but if you'd like to see more in depth how I make those if you haven't seen it yet you can refer back to another one of my big batch cooking videos um, a couple of months ago I believe. But at any rate, uh, that's going to be where we go next, right after I have my little sad corner out of this. So, I'll see you shortly. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Um, we are working on the breakfast burritos now for our next recipe. As you can see, we're already getting some good color on this. I haven't mentioned this in the past because normally when I cook, I can cook at my own pace, and so I just take my time. But if you need to speed up the process when making your hash brown potatoes, uh, cover for the first half of the cooking so all in all probably the first 10 to 15 minutes and then you can take the lid off and start crisping them up as you can see I have some nice color right here already and my timer has about a minute left so I'm just going to see all the oh that color is so pretty so we're getting some really good color on that and I have from the previous batch that I had made up for just a quick couple of burritos to send my family out on the road with. I plan on uh, going ahead and uh, making the rest today, which I am doing, of course. Good color there. So we're going to le keep letting that cook. But I did have some sausage and egg mixture already made up for the rest of the burritos. So we're going to use that. I have gotten out my package of puff pastry sheets for the puff pastry uh, egg bites. I guess for want of a better term, I'm kind of combining recipes on that. And then uh, after we do the egg bites and get the burritos and the pancakes done, we're going to end things on a high note with some homemade cinnamon rolls. And I'm pretty excited about it because I've actually never made homemade cinnamon rolls. I've never made cinnamon rolls unless you take them out of the tube and count that. So this is going to be fun. So let me keep moving on this and I'll be right back with you. And I'm back with an update. I made a boo-boo. Um, I made a serious miscalculation. I forgot for the <laughs> extra breakfast burritos I was going to make that I was also going to have to make the scrambled eggs. Now keep in mind that I make these for two weeks worth of breakfast burritos. So I have my potatoes. As I showed you before over here, I've got some extra sausage. I forgot I still had to make the scrambled eggs. So unfortunately, the pastry, uh, puff pastry egg bites are going to have to be postponed because I'm not going to have enough eggs and we're still making cinnamon rolls. So I apologize for the change in recipes. 
but we will be moving forward from here and still having a pretty darn good time. So I just wanted to update you and I will be moving forward. I'll be getting set up to wrap some breakfast burritos here in just a moment and get some pancakes made and then we're gonna move straight on to the cinnamon rolls. Okay, so we've got all of our items set up here. Let me show you real quick. So we've got our, our eggs and the sausage and the potatoes our cheese and our tortillas somewhere over here. I apologize guys, it's been kind of an odd ball day. So, but here is the goods. It's pretty simple. We've done this together before. So we just take our saran wrap, loosen it up, bring a sheet over. And this is one of those that has the slide cutter on it, which makes it really, really lovely. So my saran wrap is cut. My tortillas are warmed up. And I just warm them, the whole package, as is in the microwave for one minute. So we're going to lay out our tortilla. And we're going to start with the eggs. And see, let's see. That's a nice amount right there. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of sausage or a lot of bit of sausage because we love our sausage and a little bit of potatoes well more than that I really need a spoon I don't know why I kept a spatula but here we are so that's pretty good looking and as usual I put it right towards the center it helps actually if you kind of do it a little offset because that way when you fold it and you roll it you're not shoving everything out the back side and I've got some lovely cheese because cheese is our friend we know this okay and then I just take it and I fold my burritos weird I, I've seen other people do it it's like why am I not doing it that way and it's like I don't know because I'm special so this is the way I do it and then I like to turn it be sure my little ends aren't poking out which I'm famous for because I don't roll them correctly and actually what I do is I leave my tail over here. I do one fold over. I get the corners rolled in and then I finish rolling it up like that and boom. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going on these and get these done. And then we're going to make some pancakes really quick. And then we're going to move on to the cinnamon rolls, which I'm very excited about because I think I want to eat like 12 of them today. I'm having one of those days where it's like I've got sugar on the brain. That's probably why I decided on cinnamon rolls, to tell you the truth. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to start our pancakes. And I'm going to make the whole thing because I they freeze beautifully and I want a bunch in reserve. So, for the entire, I'm guessing the entire box is four cups of the mix. And I just use a complete package of... And I'm sorry, it's inverted, but it's a complete package. You just add water to it. And it's actually very tasty. I, I tried one after I've made these. Um, they're really good, really good. And like I said, they freeze beautifully. So this calls for four cups of the mix and two and a half cups of water. That's it. So that's what I'm going to do. And to make a little bit of a less mess situation here, I'm just going to do it in the pan. So... There's one. Boop. All right, situate that up. And if it's a little bit over, it's fine because it's a complete mix. That's two. Basically, it's, you know, if it's a little over, you just add a little bit more water if you need to. So that's three. And actually, I'm going to get more than I bargained for because I was thinking there wasn't that much in left in the previous bag. Woo! Okay, that is a bit much. I do need to back that off just a bit. Okay, that's a bit more respectable. Okay, so that's our mix. And now I've got some water over here that I went ahead and pulled. I cook with uh, spring water. I don't use tap water. And it's two and a half cups. So basically, I'm going to use the same one. I did my dry mix first, so it's all good. So two and a half of these. 
and I can probably guesstimate. Boom. And then we just mix. And we don't want to over mix because you want it kind of lumpy because otherwise you'll have tough pancakes. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my whisk. And for this, I just use a Danish whisk. It's a little bit better for, for doughs and that kind of thing. A regular whisk like you would use for eggs or whipping cream or something like that would, one, cause too much aeration, and two, it would um, be very difficult to use. A Danish whisk right here will break up your batter nicely, get it all nicely incorporated, and it won't, as you can see, you still have some nice lumpage, which is what makes your pancakes nice and airy, actually. So, it is nicely incorporated. We're ready to go. So I'm just going to get my skillet nice and hot and I'm going to start making some pancakes. So I will be right back. Alrighty, so I've got the pancakes started and they're coming along nicely. Oop, we got one kind of stuck together there. I cannot flip worth the dickens tonight. I keep flipping everything right into each other. It's getting almost comical at this point. Now, I'm only cooking these, I would say, a couple of minutes per side. Uh, my temperature on the stove is right at medium heat. And so, two to three minutes per side. But as you can see, we've got really good color here, so we don't need to worry too much more about that. And I have my batter here. I may end up making more because it's actually not going as far as I thought. But it does seem... I, I, won't, I was going to mention this. Don't push on your pancakes because you deflate them. And I caught myself. I don't know why it is the natural instinct to press on things, but don't do that. Whether it's a pancake, whether it's a hamburger patty or a turkey patty, something like that. Don't push because you're pushing out, in this case, the air, the fluffiness. And if it's a protein, you're going to be pushing out the juice. So, But yeah, I had caught myself just in time before I went, eh. And I don't know why the, the inclination to push on something is so strong. I just, I'm not sure why. I would say that this round is pretty close to being done here. I am using butter on the skillet. So I'm working rather quickly so that the butter does not burn. But I'm only using like a teaspoon at a time, just a little pat to kind of uh, lube the pan up. And then, of course, I've got my cooling rack over here. So that's pretty straightforward. I've got my butter. It's a little cold. And then I just scooch it around, get the pan nice and buttered up. And before it gets out of hand, dump some batter. Oop, there goes my doggy. Gwenny, please don't bark. Gwenny, please don't bark. She gets excited. I think we probably have a possum on the back porch. It's that time of year where they're migrating. And they stop by and have some cat kibble every once in a while. So these are looking really good. Like I said, two to three minutes per side and they're done. I'll keep going, moving them over here. And then once I'm done, we're going to get started on those cinnamon rolls. So I'll be right back at you. Okay, so we've got our recipe here. I did manage to get a copy of it. I had to fight with my printer just a tad. Um, in the bowl, I already have the warm milk and the yeast. I don't have instant yeast. I have uh, active, I think active dry yeast. Yeah, so it needs to proof. And it has, it's been about five, six minutes or so. And this recipe calls for to add that and then um, add in the sugar, there calls for an egg and then an egg yolk. So I'm going to put the sugar in, which was a quarter cup, and take my room temperature eggs out. And we're going to hopefully get this one egg yolk. I think we got her. Yep, we got it. So one egg yolk. Put that there. And then one egg. Yep, we're good. Okay, so we get that. And 
Then we called for melted butter, a quarter cup. I just measured out a quarter cup and put it in here, melted it, we're good to go. And it's not super hot, it's just nice and warm. So we're gonna pour that in and then it says to just mix until combined. Shoo. This uh, dough hook is just chasing the egg yolks around the bowl. It's so funny. Oh my. It is still chasing the egg yolks around the bowl. Okay, we're going to have to poke those babies. <laughs> ah, yes. Today just gets stranger and stranger. Okay. All right. Let's try that again. Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, so after that, then uh, we're going in with the flour and the salt. And it's said to actually not use the dough attachment until it comes together. So I'm going to go ahead and abide by that since we are baking. And I need three cups of bread flour. I went ahead and got another one as it poofs flour into the air. I got another package of bread flour out. Okay, so it's, it doesn't say to sift or anything like that. Just three cups right in. And I think what I'm going to do is take that off the bowl carefully and just use my Danish whisk here to kind of bring it all together. So that's just one cup right there. Okay, let's go ahead and get our second cup going. And it's I'm just leveling it off with my hands. And I think you do it this way so that you can incorporate the flour without over mixing it. You can get it off the sides and off the bottom. Okay, one more. Oh, I think I did have enough actually, to be honest. And there was number three. So. get it to come together here. What does the recipe say? It says, let's see, mix it till, okay, start in flour and salts. Okay, and it says just to mix until the dough starts to form. And how much salt? Three quarters of a teaspoon. So just, just a little pinchy pinch. Okay. I'm going to say that that's probably uh, there are no instructions on how to get it off the whisk once you're once you're done. I am going to actually go back in though so we can get it off the bottom a little bit. So the dough is coming together now so we're going to stop there and get it back on the dough hook. And it says from there, you're gonna need it for at medium, medium speed. <laughs> Lost some dough there. So you're gonna need it, you're going to need it at medium speed for eight minutes. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get that going here. That is, I would say that's pretty good right there. It's on number two for the mixing speed. So I would say that that's good. It says to go for eight minutes. And so I will see you in eight minutes, my friends. Okay, everybody, we have dough. It is pretty dough too. Let's see if we can Get that dough hook out. 
And as you can see, it is kneaded into a lovely, lovely dough. It's sticky without being too sticky. And now all we're going to do is it needs to rise for an hour to an hour and a half. We want it to double in size. So actually before I do that, I am going to kind of tidy it up a little bit. Give it a pretty look here. It's got some good elasticity and it does not feel like it's dry. It's not breaking as I move it. So yeah, it actually looks pretty lovely. I'm going to take and put a nice dose of olive oil in here. Run it around all sides. And then we are going to get my hands wiped off there. We're going to cover this lovely in a nice towel and we're going to put it in a nice warm place for the next hour to hour and a half. Okay, we are in the home stretch. We have beautifully risen dough. It is more than doubled in size. We're going to get it out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and flour the countertop just a hair because, yeah, it will probably stick just a little bit. We're going to roll out about a 9 by 14. We're going to try anyway. Now, I've already done my brown sugar and cinnamon mixture. I have room temperature butter right here for smoothing on the dough once we're there. Okay, so we're going to go 9 by 14. Got my handy dandy roller. I actually have guides on this. It's actually a quarter inch uh, guide on here. I bought this from Amazon and I just love it because now I have guides. So if I'm doing cookies or that kind of thing, I don't have to worry about having uneven dough. So it's pretty cool. So let's see how we can do here. I actually this is a rectangle we're gonna see how well I can do this heaven help me I hope I can make make it stretch nine by what nine by 14 I said it's supposed to be a rectangle I don't think I'm accomplishing that though <laughs> <laughs> Does an amoeba shape count? Because I think I got that down really, really nicely. Eh. Okay. Let's see if I can do this a little bit better here. Okay. Well, that is... I've got a perfect circle now. Well, kind of. Okay. Let's see if we can make it longer. Here we go. I'm not really getting the, the uh, rectangle shape down very well. Like at all. <laughs> I'm just going to use my hands. <laughs> Did I mention I've never made cinnamon rolls before? Yeah, I'm scared too. It's okay. We're, we're in this together. Well, it's getting a little bit more... Um, something. I don't know what kind of shape you'd call this at this point. <laughs> well, I know it's long enough, so we're going to go with that. How does that sound? I like it. Okay, so the recipe says to uh, basically just smear it with butter and then load the sugar on it. I can, I can do that. There's got to be something absolutely delightful about just smearing butter on food pretty awesome actually I'm sure it gave precise measurements but you know it's enough butter that all of your cinnamon and sugar and stuff will stick to it and it says to just work the cinnamon sugar in 
to the butter. Now, obviously, I'm probably not going to use everything I made here. But, you know, I'm sure it'll be really yummy on toast in the morning, too. So, we have that. And I'm going all the way to the edges. It doesn't say that you can't. But I, as you can see, as I kind of rub it in, it's kind of melting the, the butter underneath. And it's kind of mixing. Oh, that is so cool. It's just, yeah, it's melting into the butter. And that's what it said to do is to kind of just rub it into the butter and that it kind of dissolves the sugar a little bit. So I'm completely down with that. And I would say that looks pretty beautiful. And it says to kind of roll from the, uh, the it's nine by 14 so you go, you know, from the short end, or the short sides, I guess. You just roll. And then you want to pinch your edges together. Mine aren't pinching together very well. We're going to step that. It's also trying to unroll, too. Fine. Now, all in, everyone in the comments, please feel free to give me your tips and tricks on how to do this. Because mine, well, it looks just a tad misshapen. But it is holding together. Okay, and it said to just take a serrated knife. And I have a grease pan. And it says to make one inch slices. What's really poofy in the center. Okay, let me grab my serrated knife. And hope for the best. And I think we're just going to go middle. And slice. And middle and middle and then middle hopefully this is going to work and and that one fell apart but that's okay we're going to pop it in here we're going to have a couple little guys in here but that's all right okay so it's looking pretty good And it says one inch. That one was a little skinny. Okay, I'm going to have to go a little skinny on that one to get a slice in there. Okay. Check it out, though. I'm actually doing it. I'm doing it. This is kind of exciting. Well, actually, it's really exciting for me because I've never made them before. I'm going to put the skinny one over here. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fit all of these. I did uh, grease up a second pan. And I think... Okay, I think you're supposed to actually, like... Put these a little bit closer together. We're learning this together. Of course, you all at home are probably like, no, I've done this for years, and you're totally messing that up, dear. But that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to just squeeze them all into one pan. I think that's the best course of action. Okay. It's a little different. They're not even. Okay. They're not even. You know what? It's fine. I'm keeping the ends. They said that you could actually... Um, just trim, the, trim those off and discard it. And I said, absolutely not. Why not? Keep them all. So this now needs to set for another 30 to 40 minutes and rise again. So I'm going to set it back into a warm area. Get it covered with a, it said plastic wrap and a tea towel. So I'm going to do that. And when we come back, they will be going into the oven. Alrighty, we're back. Now, they haven't risen a huge amount, but they've still risen quite nicely. I'm very pleased. So, I got a cookie sheet out to lend some support 
to our aluminum tray and they bake for 20 to 25 minutes. Now, I'm, I'm going to put them in for 20 and then check them because the recipe specifically says to not overbake them. You want them, it says, to just be slightly golden, period. So they're pretty serious about that. And primarily that's because they want the insides to not get overdone. They want them to still be tender. So I can get that. So I'm going to I'm gonna do 20 and then check them because I have a feeling they're going to be done in 20 for sure. So let's get these in. Set our timer. 20. And we're off to the races. So I will be back shortly. Okay, we are back and look at this everyone. The uh, the ones on the end got a little crazy on me, but that's okay. They're still going to be delicious. They're perfectly baked and I would say definitely not bad for a first attempt. I'll take it. I'm good. Now I had this tub of cream cheese frosting already purchased. It was in the pantry shelf. It never got used for the project that I had planned on doing. So we're going to use it now. So I'm just going to take a spoon and try and break this up just a little bit. Oh, well, it's not working. So we're just going to use the back of the spoon and smear it all over the cinnamon rolls, just like we know what we're doing. I'm so excited. I actually made cinnamon rolls. I feel so accomplished. Oop, it's taken off on me. And yes, I'm going to be quite liberal with the frosting because why not? It's frosting. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm definitely expanding my baking repertoire. And these are great because you can actually freeze these baked individually and then package them up. And when you want one, just take one out and you can let it come to room temperature and heat it up in the microwave. Or you can just... Well, I would suggest letting them come to room temperature, i.e. defrost, before popping them in the microwave. Because that way you only have to do it for a couple of seconds and you won't lose all your frosting everywhere so badly. Some of these just popped right out. I read um, on the recipe what that means. Maybe you all can tell me in the comments. Like I didn't get it wrapped tightly enough or I didn't use enough... Believe it or not, like um, filling. I cannot remember for the life of me what that said. If you all know, please let me know in the comments so that I don't repeat it next time. But like I said, I mean, these are going to be incredibly tasty. The family's coming home. They, they're coming in late tonight. But um, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care how late they get in tonight. They will want these the second they come in the door. And I will probably have to uh, lock myself up tonight so I don't eat the whole pan. Goodness gracious. But they did, they turned out really, really fun. And I can't wait to get better and better at making these. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for the holidays. And just, you know, like in this case, it's just really delightful having these for a special occasion. I.e., hey, you're coming home. I got you some cinnamon rolls made. Okay, I should probably quit there. That looks pretty decadent. But we did it. Beautiful, beautiful cinnamon rolls. And the recipe said it makes nine, but I cut mine a little thinner. I think I got uh, six, nine. Oh, yeah, I got more than that. I should have made them a lot bigger, I guess. Oh, well, just more to eat. <laughs> Everybody. I want to thank you for coming along with me. Well, everybody, we did it. We weren't able to get that one recipe done because I ran out of eggs, but I'd say we did pretty gosh darn good. We got two beautiful breakfast casseroles, one for the freezer and one for this weekend and then for the road. We got 14 homemade pancakes. We got 14 huge breakfast burritos. I'm super excited that those got done. And to top it all off, some pretty rock star, tasty looking cinnamon rolls with about 400 gallons of frosting, which I'm very excited about. I'm sure my family will be too. <laughs> all of these are freezer friendly 
can be made ahead. They'll be great for a brunch. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm really excited about everything, how they came out. And I hope that you all had a good time watching me work my way through some of these new recipes. The cinnamon rolls were a first timer that I've never attempted before. And I only hope that I will continue to get better as I make them. Thank you everyone for coming along with me. I really enjoyed always, as always, spending time with you all. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate your company. Take care. I love you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.